Good evening and hello friends and welcome inside the wings located on Highway 280 where tonight it's the Meet the Bulls Players Party on this week's edition of Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. I'm Michael Benz and we have lots of things to go over this week on this week's show. We had the big game against bitter division rival the Louisiana Ice Skaters on Saturday night. Lots to go over with the coach here in a moment about that great game. We'll sit down with Southern Conference All-Star starter Kelly Perot later on in the show. And also, as promised last week, you're not going to want to miss it. At the end, we will go over the new segment to air on this week's show. So we have lots of great things planned. We'll get it all started in just a few moments when we come back on Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. And welcome back to Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. Now joined by the Bulls head coach, Dennis DeRogier. And Rosie, going back to this past week, the All-Star break has come and gone. You get back to work, and it starts with a home ice win. Uh, a win against the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks, a pretty solid performance both defensively and got some great goaltending out of Scott Roach. Yeah, I thought that was a good game. We played very well, didn't score a lot, three goals. That's all we needed, though. We only gave up one. And uh, I thought everybody played well. I thought the defense was solid all night. Uh, you know, we had a power play goal, if I remember that far back. And uh, we played very, very well that night. It was a pretty good uh, outing up by the whole team, forwards, defense, goaltending, everybody. And then the big match of the week, no doubt about it, took place on Saturday night at home against the Louisiana Ice Skaters. And we knew this, although we have not faced them many times, we knew it was going to be a matchup against two very physical teams, two very good hockey teams. And it all got started very early in the opening period. You get a quick strike by none other than your captain, Jamie Hex. Yeah, we played well. Uh, I thought in the first and second period, we played very well. And in certain areas, we even dominated the play. We weren't able to get a big lead going, though. We, we just uh, kept them hanging around. We gave up a couple power play goals. and. Uh, as a result, they, uh, going into the third period, it was still tied. And you talk about the power play goals, Dennis. Well, special teams was a big part in your first period because after Louisiana ties it up 1-1, you'll get a power play goal by Hugo Belanger, his 21st goal of the season. And special teams in games like this are big. Yeah, they are. And, you know, against these guys, they got a, a really good penalty kill. And, uh, you know, we end up with a couple of uh, power play goals on this night. And you, under normal circumstances, you'd like to think that that would be enough to uh, kind of push you through it. And then the Bulls were up 2-1. to one. They would tack on in the second period. It was going to be a shorthanded goal this time. So the Bulls get another special teams play. This time it's Jeff Scarf picking up his first of what would be three goals on the night, his 18th of the year. And you got to like shorthanded goals. You do. And it's a bit of a fluky goal here. Uh, I don't know. It, I think it could have went either way. But I, I thought this was one of the few calls the referee made that was actually correct in this entire game. And you can see Tyler Johnson made the cross ice pass over to Jeff Scarf. He was able to tap it past the Louisiana netminder to give the Bulls a 3-1 lead. And things looked good from there. Although there would be some seesawing back and forth, the ice skaters would then get a couple of unanswered goals. But Dennis, we talked about the physicality of this matchup. And things turned ugly in the second period. It appeared that the referee, Chris Shook, lost some control of this game. And you're going to see here some of the, the fights and the bouts that took place. Yeah, th this is uh, Rob Stanfield, and he had a couple of scraps, one with Melanson and one with uh, their number 22. I'm not sure what his name is, big kid. But uh, he just uh, really stood up for the team. This kid has really played well and really developed through the course of the year for us, and I'm very proud of the way he's uh, handling himself. He's not, a, he's not a guy that'll run your power play for you, but he's a, a solid guy, and here he's fighting 22. His 22 had just really chopped uh, Scotty Ray across the back of the head. Unfortunately, we didn't get it on tape, so we no use sending it into the league, but uh, Stanfield jumped right in there and defended Ray, and uh, uh, pretty proud of him for that. Yeah, you have to appreciate whenever teammates will stand up for one another because the hit Rizov put on Ray was absolutely uncalled for, and as Dennis mentioned, it's unfortunate there wasn't good footage on it because there was no doubt a suspension probably warranted. Here you're going to see the game-winning goal. Louisiana's Vashi Nedomansky will get credit for Louisiana's seventh of the night, and this really gave your team a big hole to come out of down three at this point. We really made a bad mistake here in the corner. Tyler Johnson turned the puck over and Nedomansky just walked out. And, you know, a situation like that, Roach really, you know, he doesn't have uh, much of a chance on that. You know, he's, uh, if he gets it, it's more luck than uh, anything else. And, I, you know, we, those are things that we just can't let happen as much as we're letting happen. And here's a guy, Jeff Scarf, who would get the last two goals of the evening to get the Bulls within one. He picks up his 19th, and then you'll see here in just a few moments his 20th goal of the season in Dennis. Here's a player who said at the beginning of the season, he set a goal for himself to become a 20-goal scorer in this league. Well, he's become that. He can now take that to the next level. Well, I hope he doesn't turn it off and stay at 20, and I know he won't. He's, uh, he's a kid that we, uh, we tried to get here, oh, two or three years ago. Mike Zaruna and I, he was in Cincinnati's camp in the IHL. 
He went back to junior that year, then last year he started in Greenville, and we ended up picking him up from Toledo. And the reason we did that was because we thought a lot of him as a player, and we thought he had a lot of potential, and uh, he's now showing the potential that we thought he had, and uh, he's become a, a pretty darn good goal scorer. 20 goals is a nice season. You know, he's still got uh, 28, 29 goal, or 27, 28 uh, games left, so he could get another 15 goals, and that's a real solid season for anybody. And Dennis, when we take a look at this game, your, your team fought back, and I know that says a lot, but you were probably a little unhappy because they dug themselves a, a hole going down three in that third period. But also, it just goes back to some of the refereeing, and I'm not going to use that as an excuse at all why the team lost the game, but it just seemed like, once again, Don Murdoch in the first period was doing a lot of antics at the front of his bench trying to get the referee's attention. You said to me, even during the radio broadcast that night, that you had some words with him, and it just seemed like... He may have been a little intimidated out there. Well, I thought he was, and I mentioned that to him between the second and third period. And he told Hicks at the start of the third, well, I'm not calling any penalties in. And he proceeded not to call penalties in the third, which I don't think is how a referee should approach a game if he's doing a very professional job. You, you call what's in front of you, and if you see and believe it's a penalty, you call it, and you don't worry about what people say about you. You do your job, and uh, to say I'm not going to call any more penalties, well, you can't do that. I mean, whatever's in front of you, you call. And he went on, after all the penalties in the second, all of a sudden there's not a penalty in the third. Well, I think that's wrong, too. And after seeing now most of the teams in the Southwest Division, Dennis, and going up against Louisiana in that very tight contest, do you think it's going to come down between you two teams here the rest of the way? Well, it's hard to say. I, I, I will say, and Actually, I don't read the paper, so I don't know exactly word for word what got printed, but I think that I'll say what I think was in the papers. What I, what I said to the, to the uh, reporters was that we have to make changes, and I still think, I believe we have to make changes. I don't think we're strong enough to compete on a regular basis with the top teams in the, in the division right now, the Louisianas, the Mobiles, the Baton Rouges. We haven't faced that, those teams many times this year. The times we have faced them, we've not fared well, so I think we have to tweak our team. I don't think we can sit pat on it. We've uh, really lost uh, talent in Bodnerchuk and not uh, regained it, and we have to do that, and I think we have to shore up our defense. We certainly can't keep allowing seven goals on 31 shots every night if we expect to win. So the Bulls split a pair of home games this past weekend going one and one Fans, we need to step aside. We'll be back with more on Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. This is Dennis DeRoge, head coach of the Birmingham Bulls, and you're watching Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. And welcome back to Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey, here from the Wings, located on Highway 280. And we're now joined by Bulls All-Star defenseman Kelly Perot. And Kelly, taking a look back at that All-Star selection, your first All-Star appearance since juniors, it had to be a big honor to be selected, not only as an All-Star, but as an All-Star starter. Oh, yeah, it definitely was a big, uh, uh, it was a great, uh, feeling to uh, be uh, voted, especially when it comes from uh, the coaches and uh, the media, then uh, it's very overwhelming and uh, I was very appreciative of the honor. And it was a big festivity planned for you. You had to go up there a little early because they had some activities set for you the night before the All-Star Game. Talk a little bit about the day before an All-Star Game. What goes on? And then that night, you have some skills competitions that you took place in. Tell us a little bit about the, the day, the skills competitions you were involved in and how well you did. First of all, I'd like to just say that uh, the whole event was run very well, very professionally by the East Coast Hockey League. I was very impressed by uh, the show that they put on. Um, first of all, we got in there and uh, they treated us very well and uh, we had a dinner the first night and then uh, the second night on the Tuesday, then uh, we went through in the morning, then we had a skate, kind of got to put on our gear and stuff like that, get used to it. And uh, then that night we went out and had the skills competition and uh, got placed in our events. And uh, what events you, each player gets to select two events to take part in. You selected two. What two events were you able to take place in? Uh, I did the rapid fire and uh, the hardest shot. And then thirdly, we did a uh, breakaway. Basically with uh, the hardest shot, then uh, I believe the hardest one was 95.7. And uh, I registered uh, 94.5. Oh, wow. And uh, so I came third in that one. And then uh, in the rapid fire, then there's uh, two shooters. And you go back and forth. Uh, five shots each and uh, scored two on five or two of five shots and then uh, they broke it up into uh, three groups for a breakaway relay 
and uh, I was six guys each, and uh, so we ran that off and uh, scored on my breakaway. So not, overall, it was a pretty good night. Not too shabby night, and then you go from the skills competition to the next night there, and then, of course, the all-star game itself. And as a player, when you get ready and you put on your all-star gear, do the, the butterflies, I mean, knowing it's still a meaningless game, but still that it's the stars of the league all going. It's a nationally televised game to be shown on ESPN, too. Does it start to hit you a little bit like, wow, this is a, this is a pretty big ordeal? Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's overwhelming, like I said, but I don't know if I got the butterflies or not, but uh, I felt r fairly comfortable when I was out on the ice throughout the game, and uh, just something, you know, it's uh, a lot of fun, and uh, you just want to show your best in front of a big crowd there. And then when you talk about the actual All-Star game, the Northern Conference defeated the Southern Conference All-Stars by a score of 8-6. to six. And it seems like that All-Star games nowadays, whether it's at our level or even the higher levels, they become offensive shootouts. There's not really, you know, much defense. You'll never see penalties called. It's really, a, you know, to, to be for the fan friendly, be a spectator sport, get the high offense going, get the fans into it. Is that pretty much how the game play, turned out and played out? Yeah, it definitely was. It's a little frustrating sometimes being a defenseman, you know, uh, trying to keep the puck out of the net. But uh, anyway, it seemed like I had my guy at times, and then whatever happened, next thing you know, the puck's in the back of the net. But uh, it's all in good fun, and uh, basically, I think the fans had a great time, and. Uh, the wrong team just came out on top. Finally, Kelly, you get the All-Star jersey, the nice looking All-Star jersey with your name and number on the back. You get to keep yours. What are you going to do with your All-Star jersey? Uh, I'm not too sure yet. You know, right now it's just sitting in the closet. Uh, but uh, maybe in the future, we'll, if I ever get a sports little sports bar down in my basement or something like that, we'll throw it in a frame and uh, throw it up. Fantastic. Well, Kelly, congratulations on being named a Southern Conference All-Star starter. Best of luck the rest of the year, and we look for all-star numbers the second half of the season. Thank you. That's Bulls defenseman Kelly Perot. Fans, we need to step aside. We'll be back with more on Wendy's Inside Bulls Hockey. The Birmingham Steel Dogs Arena Football 2 team is having tryouts for its 2000 season dance team cheerleaders. Tryouts will be held at the Studio Dance Club located on 20th Street in Five Points South beginning at 3 p.m. today, January 29th. Interested candidates must be 18 years or older. Dance or cheerleader experience is preferred. For the tryouts, a 30 second to two and a half minute maximum self-prepared dance or cheer routine to the music of your choice will be required. For more information, call 458-8649. 